Let's switch gears now and start talking about the science of microscopy. And we'll begin with light microscopy. By definition, when we talk about light microscopy, we're talking about the kind of microscopy that uses visible light to view microscopic specimens. Now, if you're not familiar with the wavelengths of different types of electromagnetic radiation, visible light falls into the spectrum at about 400 to 700 nanometers. That becomes important when we talk about other types of microscopy. But understand that light microscopy gets its name because it uses light in the visible range, the visible wavelengths, in order to view specimens. Now, the compound light microscope is simply a microscope that uses visible light and has multiple objective lenses available. The objective lenses each produce a different level of magnification of the specimen that's being examined. Now, with a compound light microscope, you can examine specimens using one of three different methods. You can use what's called bright field, what's called dark field, and what's called phase contrast. In bright field microscopy, the light is reflected off of the specimen on the slide and does not enter the objective lens. What that produces visually is a dark object against a very bright background. That's what you will see when you look through the eyepieces at the specimen. Dark object, bright background, hence the term bright field. Dark field is essentially the opposite. The, the light that's reflected off of the specimen actually enters the objective lens. And what that produces is a very light looking object against a very dark background. That's dark field. Last is phase contrast. Now phase contrast looks a lot like bright field, but the difference is Phase contrast accentuates what's called the diffraction of light as it passes through a specimen. Remember, organisms are three-dimensional, and what phase contrast allows for is a more detailed three-dimensional view of the specimen. On this slide, you can see a single-celled organism, and you can see it as it appears under a compound light microscope using both bright field, dark field, and phase contrast. So let's take a look left to right. Here, the image, the organism, the object, looks much darker than the field that surrounds it. Now this cell has been fixed to the slide and it's been stained. That's why it looks this pink color. Bright field is particularly useful when we are staining the material that we're looking at. Having the material have various colors, depending of course on the stain that you use, having those bright colors really helps us see the details of the object against that bright background. Now look at the exact same cell under the dark field option. Again, under dark field, the object is going to be lighter than the background. The field is going to be dark to black. Now, as you can see, you're looking at the exact same cell with the exact same stain but you're getting a different, a different um, amount of detail. You're seeing different structures under the dark field option than you can see under the bright field option. It's just another tool in allowing us to understand the structure.
of these cells. Now phase contrast again at first looks a lot like Brightfield. I see a darker colorful cell against a brighter background. Note that when you're under phase contrast the background isn't nearly as light and bright as it is under Brightfield. It's, it's more gray. That's very typical. But I want you to also notice that there are more what we would refer to as three-dimensional details in this cell that are visible right now. For example, you can see all around the periphery of this cell little cilia, little hairs coming off of the surface. Those are not really visible under Brightfield. They're there. They're there. It's just that they're really hard to see in any detail under Brightfield. Phase contrast allows us to see them. Internally, I can see this uh, organelle or this uh, vacuole here that has much more detail than it does over here. You can see just a little bit more about what that structure is. You can see its boundary more clearly. You can see maybe some material inside of it more clearly than you can under Brightfield. So phase contrast again shares a lot with Brightfield in that the object is darker than the background, but we see more three-dimensional details using phase contrast. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the optical science of microscopy. I don't want us to get too far into the weeds of the physics of microscopy, but there is some terminology that we need to be familiar with so that we can understand the particular capabilities of any microscope. The first term we need to think about is this term resolution. Resolution is defined as the ability of an objective lens to distinguish two points in a specimen. In other words, it's the ability of the lens to show two different things as two separate different things instead of showing them as one thing together. So the resolution of an objective lens allows us to see two things that are very close together as being separate from each other and not just one sort of blurred object. Now we discuss resolution using the term resolving power. So for example, a light microscope that has a resolving power of 200 nanometers can distinguish between two objects as long as those two things are at least 200 nanometers apart. Let me say that again because that's an important concept. If there are two things on the microscope slide that are at least 200 nanometers apart from each other, that lens that has that resolving power will, will show them as two different things. If they are any closer together than 200 nanometers, however, let's say they're only 100 nanometers apart, under that lens, they will look like a single object. So the resolving power describes for us sort of the minimum distance. Those two things need to be away from each other in order for us to see them as two things. So as a lens improves in its resolution, as its resolution gets better and better and better, the resolving power number is going to get smaller and smaller. Generally speaking, compound light microscopes have a resolving power of about 200 nanometers. The next term I want us to think about is the term refractive index. Now this is a, a term in uh, optical science that gives students fits. The definition is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in another medium. 
Now, I don't need you to learn that definition. That's not what's important to us in learning about refractive index. What refractive index tells us is that light travels differently through different types of materials, and you probably already knew that. In other words, as light travels through air, it behaves one way. As light travels through water, it behaves another way. As it travels through oil and other media, other liquids, it, it changes. The nature of the light changes. It bends differently. So there are a couple things we need to be familiar with when it comes to refractive index. The refractive index of air is one and we compare other materials then to air. The refractive index for water is 1.33. The refractive index for the oil that we use with our microscope, immersion oil, is 1.5. So, so why does that matter? Well, it turns out that the higher the refractive index of a material, the less the light will bend as it passes through that material. That's what I want you to know. As the refractive index gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the light bends less through that material. Okay? So the refractive index of air at 1 is lower than the refractive index of our immersion oil at 1.5. That tells us something. That tells us that light traveling through air is going to bend more than light traveling through oil. Now, why is that important? Well, let's think about that. Take a look at the image over here on the right side of the slide. It's the same image that was on the last slide. This is representative of the internal workings of our light microscope. Remember, we have a light source down in the base and that light source is sending light up through the iris diaphragm, through the condenser lenses, and remember our condenser is gonna focus that light onto the specimen. That's what you can see here. The blue line and the red line are coming together right at the level of the specimen, right at the level of the slide. But that light is, is bending, as light tends to do as it passes through different materials. The red line demonstrates the way it bends in air. And using this particular lens that we have in place here, if we allow the light to travel through air, it's going to bend to the point that it misses the lens. This would be representative of our 100x oil immersion lens. Now, what about if we put oil on top of the slide in the space between the slide and the lens? Well, that's what the blue line shows us. The light is going to travel up through the condenser. It's going to hit the oil. It's going to bend less, and it's going to hit our objective lens in the scope and allow us to see it. So, at a very high magnification, and for us, that's 100x. Light passing through air bends so much that it can miss the lens, the objective lens. We won't be able to see what we're trying to see. What we need is a material with a higher refractive index so that the light will be bent less and we'll be able to see the object. And that's what immersion oil does for us. Immersion oil, because it has a higher refractive index than air, prevents this excessive bending of the light, allows it to enter the lens, and we're able to see the object.